Welcome back to the Clydesdale Media News Channel. We are going live after the Rogue Invitational finished up just about an hour ago. Um, we're hoping to have a few guests pop on through the next hour. But until then, we'll kind of talk about the weekend and try to remember what happened four days ago all the way through today. So what's going on? Go ahead. What's going on, guys? Nothing. Cats sounds like no. she's recovering from a rough day. <laughs> you know, putting on eyeliner will get you every time. I'm doing my nails right now because this is the only time I have to do them. Um, we tried to get on and talk about this throughout the weekend, but it just didn't make sense. Correct? Is that kind of what we agree Correct. on? Correct. Um, well, because also know, a lot of our listeners. Oh, go ahead. Don't. I just gonna say also because we have uh, you know a little bit of a life, so uh, we right. were just balancing doing fun things this weekend too. Correct. Yeah, Amy and I had to win all the money at a euchre tournament on Friday night. That did happen. Uh, yeah, I did take first. And I just want to let you guys know that <laughs> she did, and um, and then like with all the weather delays and things going late and a lot of our listeners listen to Sevon, we don't want to compete. We want to have let them listen to both. So we just said screw it, we'll do a final recap on Sunday. So overall impressions of the Rogue Invitational. Oh my gosh, what kind of pizza? Yeah, what kind <laughs> of pizza? Lex. I am having a hungry day. Uh-oh. But I'm fighting it. Um, I thought it was really well done. You know, I mean, my, my impression is I loved that the leaderboard kept moving. Like yeah. to remember who the podium was right now is very hard because yeah. it kept changing event after event. Yeah. You had to check and it. Think, religiously. And that we don't, we don't get a lot of in CrossFit, but there's so much young talent and, um, there's so much young talent that it just, it keeps changing and changing. I just like too, that every race is sort of meaningful. Right. You know, it's not just like, Oh, this person's in first place and now they've got an 800 point lead and it doesn't really matter how they do. Uh, my, I love the events. I thought it was well put on rogue always does such a great job with all of that. They had plenty of judges. So well everybody, organized. Yeah. Everybody like the field looks really good the way the equipment's laid out and the way everything is just orchestrated it, they do a really good job behind the scenes getting all that um, put together. Um, I thought the events were good. I, I still can't believe that Laura Horvat can't do strict handstand pushups and she won. I, I'm not okay with that. Okay. That's my, that's my only takeaway. It's nothing against her. I just, I don't get how you could be. So, have such a big hole and, and win. I mean, it's so been they were talking, they were talking on Sivan before we jumped on okay. that she is the greatest CrossFit athlete with the biggest hole. Yeah, for sure. And, and everybody has holes. Everybody has things they're not great at, but my gosh, hers is debilitating. Well, but they're not, those people are not winning events. I well, mean, Justin Medeiros doesn't have a big gaping hole. Um, Matt Fraser didn't have any gaping holes. Tia Claire Toomey doesn't have any gaping holes. Well, I think putting Justin in the league of the other two is a mistake. I think that Justin does have some holes, and I think they came top end strength. out a little bit this weekend. <laughs> top not strength. top end strength, but. Not anymore. What, what are his holes? But Scott? yeah. So I don't, I think he just, he does not have a home run swing. He is that's not over a whole consistent. That's just, yeah. Mm, okay. I, I, I what I'm saying is he made some execution errors this weekend, I think. And, and that's always a thing, but his execution is not, you know, he's not notorious for having stretch strategy issues. He's not notorious for, you know, not pacing correctly or something like that. Like he is super consistent. And I think that's the whole reason why he wins these events because consist consistency pays off. Um, 
if Matt Fraser needed a win, he won. If Tia needs to win, she wins. Justin doesn't have that switch. And if Pat Vellner has better strategy in the last event, Justin doesn't win today. So he's relying on other athletes' mistakes. And so it's just about consistency for him. He does not have the home run hitter swing or the switch to win when he needs to win. He just has been lucky enough that the other athletes keep messing up. Mm. Okay. I'll give you that. So can we talk about another big hole? Let's. Danielle Brandon. And yeah. Swatting. Yeah. I think we knew that though, right? We did know that, but I'm just, I was shocked at how obvious. Yeah. I didn't think she, she couldn't even get through that. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. We got a. Oh, buddy. Hello. What's going go. on down here? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Hey. hey, what's up, Scott? Not Congrats this lot. weekend. So, yeah. Congrats on your debut. Thank you. Yeah. Pardon me. I said just said congratulations on your yeah. debut. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a different experience, that's for sure. <laughs> so, talk to us about that. This is uh, this is a weird, a big event. Uh, a lot of home run hitters in this this event this weekend. What was that like for you, and what did you learn? It was definitely a good experience on it because I the whole competition I had to remind myself that the like the top fit the fifteen of the twenty guys there were personally invited from the CrossFit Games who finished first through fifteenth. So I had to take that into consideration, um, being at the lower end of the leaderboard. But uh, the fact that I was able to still put in three top ten finishes in that in that field was a you know, it was a sign of uh, it was a morale booster for me knowing that like, Hey, I, I'm definitely, I definitely belong here in this field and I can hang with these guys. There's some stuff that I learned that there's definitely some stuff I need to work on um, for certain events, but for the most of it, it's, you know, it's not, it's not an issue of fitness. The fitness is there. So this was a 10 event weekend. Yes. No other event goes that big other than the games. So how tired are you now after this, this long weekend? Uh, I, I'm ready to do event 11. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sore. Uh, everyone else, uh, a lot of us were thinking that it was just going to be six events based off of previous years. Um, but 10 events, we do, that's a typical, honestly, like three, three training sessions a day or three pieces a day is about the average, um, to average training time that we do per day leading up to this. So it's, it's pretty, it's, it's just another day, I think. But as far as the intensity and the stress level on top of all of that definitely heightens the amount of fatigue that you put on the body. So what kind of food did you crush after? Uh, I haven't gotten any food yet. I have oh. to, I came right back to the hotel. I'm packing up because I got, I'm driving home tonight. So back, back to Louisiana, crazy. but I did, I was debating, I got a buddy here with me and I'm debating on even hitting a Chinese buffet. Cause I love that. <laughs> or we might just stop and I might just get like three big Macs from McDonald's and a large sweet tea. Cause I haven't had a sweet tea in like a year. Well, you deserve it. Yeah. And you may need that caffeine to keep you awake on the drive. Yes. Well, yeah, we're going to stop and get a coffee before I got pre-workout too. So I'm not, I'm not afraid to uh, dip into that. <laughs> get the That's tingles actually a the great idea. I've never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. You can be, you get a little tingly, you get a little tingly and you start itching your face and everything. And then the past seat driver starts asking you what's wrong. And, uh, and then, but you just go with it. You just throw on some head banging music and you roll for like four hours. Especially on Halloween weekend. Yeah, <laughs> I got to get back and dress up as skeletons for my son. <laughs> Do you have a favorite event of the weekend, Scott? I, um, personally, my favorite event was the log event just because of where I finished that I've never had a top 10 finish in a strength event, a one rep max ever in any competition. And I like that because it was, it had, an impl uh, it had like a, like a raw strength part of it. But there was also such a technical side to that lift because if you didn't have the right technique, 
then you were going to struggle with that log. So I like, that was my favorite. I would say that was my favorite event just based off of, cause that was a, that was the biggest win for me of the weekend. Yeah. Um, and then I would say another fun event was the lunge and the sandbag drag up the hill. I thought that was pretty cool. I've never dragged something up a hill before and it was just, it's just different. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. You had some help too, um, leading up to the event on that log thing, right? Were you working with like a strongman coach or? Yeah. Well, no, I actually, I, I hit up, I hit up one of my buddies, Justin King. And I said, Hey, do you know anybody? He lives close to Baton Rouge and he, 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 he's been around the, he's from there. So he knows everybody. And I said, Hey, do you have any, you know, anybody that does strongman? And he goes, yeah, he hit me. He, he linked me up with somebody from the Atlas strength shop there in Baton Rouge. And I went up there and I did like a little 60 minute session with them and called it, called it good. But yeah, he taught make, me, what's that? Did it make a difference? It did because I was, I had a log, I had a, like a 10 inch log at, at, uh, at one of the gyms that I go to, but I didn't know any of the technique. I was watching videos and I was, you know, trying to easier said than done kind of thing. I, I can look at it, but I can't really put it all together. And then he watched me and he was just like, Hey, just, he gave me one, one little advice. It was just like, Hey, when you stand up with it, that's when you bring your elbows out to kind of like lock it into place and keep it high. And from then on, like the clean, that just made the cleans easier and allowed me to save, conserve more energy for the jerk. It looked fun. Yeah, that seemed it. to be where the difficult, the difficulty yeah. began for people is getting that clean up. And if they had to do it multiple times, they were done. Right. So, yeah, I mean, before that I worked up to a 275 uh, clean and jerk with the log and training. So I was confident, I was comfortable with the 260, 270. And then the 280 was like, all right, let's just, let's just see what I got. And the 290, the clean felt super easy. And I, I went back and watched my video afterwards. I was like, oh man, I'll, I almost hit that 290. Like I, I had it, but fell for it. So let me ask you this. There, there was a little drama around that event uh, <laughs> about a time clock and Scott has, oh, there he is. Yeah. And a little about a time clock. Yep, I'm could back. You someone, guys someone's see me the a uh, Could you see the 45 second time clock on the field or were your judges just telling you? No, we could see the clock. We, okay. we could see the clock and I, and I don't know what was going on. I was on the opposite side of the field, but there was a bunch of athletes that we, we had a 45 second window to lift. And then there was a 15 second transition between uh, the next lifter and we clearly saw we clearly saw that the clock was he started lifting it around like the the 50 50 second mark and we were all we were all confused because I didn't know if somebody like because it very well could have like hey that transition time like somebody the rule was you had to move the log you had to get the log moving prior to the 45 seconds. So if you lifted it at 45 seconds and it's moving, it's in your hip crease and you're like, you're in the lift, then you can go until 55 seconds or something. So I thought, you know, some, we didn't, we didn't know really what was going on. It could have, so maybe somebody ate into his time and he was late getting there and they were trying to get the full 45 seconds, but it was, if they questioned it, I guess they came back to, you know, it was, uh, he lifted too late. So that was that was kind of the drama, but we could see the clock. I looked over and it was like fifty-one seconds, and other athletes noticed it as well too. Okay, yeah, it's good you cleared that up because I don't think anybody has stated that you guys could see a clock on the field. So that's good. To yeah, know. there was the, uh, the well, at least for me because I was lane one, so the clock was closest to us. They only had one. That was the only time I saw a clock the entire weekend there, but they, really? it was in the. It was in the front right corner, and then they had another one in the back left corner. So it was just based on where you were positioned in the field, whether or not you could see the clock or not. Um, but because I was in lane one, I was all, with the, all the way by um, – all the way to the – I guess if you're looking at home plate from the – yeah, if you so if you're on – like I was on the third baseline essentially on the field, and okay. – there was a clock just to the right of that. So everybody in that lane one could see the clock very well. And actually it kind of came over from lane two and lane one that, you know, the time had expired. So as an outsider looking in, I noticed that that event, the log event, and then the heavy grace kind of redundant in terms of movement pattern. 
did that sort of come into play at all? Were you kind of like, hmm, this feels really familiar? No, I mean, I, I think it had a different component. That was just kind of the last event, the heavy grace of 225 was just – that was just a go. Who can cycle a heavier bar, uh, heavier moderate weight barbell um, mm -hmm. the best? And I think it had a very good – we haven't really cycled any heavy weight this, whole, this entire weekend. So, I mean, the lunges was a, the lunges at 155 was a moderate. Um, the overhead squats was a light 135 for us. The, uh, the back squats at 405 was a heavier weight. But um, that wasn't like you had – you had – you had to be cautious with that because if you dropped it, you failed a rep, then you were responsible for getting the barbell up. So yeah. the last workout was just like, Hey, who can lift the heavier weights fast? And I thought it was a, I thought it was a good way to finish it. I was just thinking that like, you didn't do any snatches, right? Do we do any snatches? Dumbbell snatches. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking like Isabel would have been maybe a different, you know, choice instead of I mean, grace, a heavy, a heavy Isabel. Or like a Randy or something. I don't know. That's just the programmer brain in me thinking like, I don't know if I would have done that or not. I don't know if they would have done. There was a, I mean, if you think about the the way I looked at it is that, you know, Thursday was the trail run and Friday was a, was a lot more volume. And then almost like uh, Saturday was almost like a kind of like a deload day for us because we had a total of seven minutes of work. And that's if you made mm -hmm. it all the way to the final round. So there wasn't a lot of volume the next day, and then the and then we had that log, so it was it was a different day. I wouldn't I wouldn't think that they would put snatch in, in the snatch in, in the in two days dumbbell snatch and then a mm -hmm. barbell snatch in the same day. Yeah. So we were all kind of thinking that it was we haven't really seen much of a barbell really clean. So I, I, we were we were expecting like some type of uh, clean. Nick Math Nick Matthews even called it. He goes, no, oh, I think it's going to be some type of benchmark workout. He called it. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about doing muscle ups with the um, heavy or the thicker uh, log there? Uh, originally, I was kind of happy with it because one of the gyms that I work in Illinois, one of the gyms that I worked out at my work gym, we had a three inch, a three inch diameter pole. And I've done a lot of gymnastics with like pull ups and toes to bar and everything with it. So I was like, oh, kind of comfortable with it. And then my... And then I went out there and I kind of did the old famous Tetlow thing and just went out too hot and blew up. So after that, I was like, screw this four inch vlog. This thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but originally I was like, I was pretty confident on it originally. And then uh, just trying to figure it out, but kind of bit me in the butt. So you did really well in that, uh, the hill sprint with the goblet squat. Um, yes. what was it like coming down that hill at full speed? It was, I mean, I, it was more like just don't fall on my face and roll over. Cause there, if you think about it, there's total, like all the athletes, there's 280 going up the hills and coming down. I was like, someone's going to fall on their face coming down for sure. <laughs> roll. But that was, it. I was just trying to stay, stay on pace. And like, it wasn't like a sprint down to the end. It was just like, hey, this is where you kind of compose yourself because it's an easier – you have gravity pulling you down. So this is where you kind of save your body. So don't try to run down there as fast as you can knowing that you have a, long, a lot more running to do. Last question for me is – at, when you got there, you guys got all the baseball stuff. We know from interviewing you that you are a former baseball player. And then you got to go to the swing simulator. Were you hoping that that was going to be an element this weekend? What, what do you mean the element? Like like somebody was going to hit a home run? Like a workout. Like, yeah. like, like a workout. You know, well, like it was, the old softball the throw from. Yeah, it was the home run derby. And we were like, and I was kind of it could have been like hey that's how we're gonna do the heat assignments whoever hits the most home runs with that i mean could have been a fun way to start it yeah <laughs> uh not every cool. not everybody had as sweet a swing as you did no i i would say that there was other people there that had a better swing than, than mine it's been a minute i was not a little rusty I, I i grounded the first the first four or five and they're like eh, give them another five give them another five and then i fell into my groove Hitting is hard. People don't realize that. <laughs> hitting, a, hitting a baseball is very hard. It is. So most importantly, how's the baby, Scott? Baby is good, healing up. He just got rid of his cough uh, yesterday. Yeah. 
So he's in. He's uh, back on a normal schedule. Awesome. So that is uh, it's good news. Awesome. Good. Well, thanks for jumping on, Scott. We really appreciate it. Um, are you going to sneak in another qualifier under your wife's nose, or are you going to let her know next time? Uh, I th- I'm going to. I don't know. I'll probably tell her see how I'm doing. Don't don't get her any. Uh, yeah, I kind of just start something and then I'm going. Hey, I'm doing this. It's, it's kind of. <laughs> don't you remember? I told you. <laughs> it, it, my my wife and I. She she's. She's very supportive of me, and you know I'm very grateful to have her have her in my life, and for her to be able to stay home with the two kids while I come up here and do this. And so, she, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done competing. I think at a, uh, at any competitions until the until the season starts. So I think I, I think I owe that to her. I did my one competition, and it was a it was probably the best competition that I could have done. Sure. With the amount of experience here and how the event and the the workouts were, so I think I'm going to be done and give her that until the season gets a little bit busier. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Scott. Drive safe and uh, yeah. en- enjoy the rest of your week. Will do. Anytime. All right. Take we'll care, guys. See you guys. Bye. Good awesome. Okay. Let's. Speaking of the leaderboard, let's take a look at the leaderboard. We were to, what were we talking right. about before uh, he got on though? Danielle, Brandon. Oh yeah, her squatting. It just yeah. how how um how I mean like she was struggling and mentally talking, too. Did, like yeah, she, did you see her talk? Very to, defeated. Talk to the to the uh, the cameraman. Yeah, yeah like, get out of my face. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> He's like they're making me. <laughs> right. He's like I'm sorry they're making me. Yeah, but I mean, not just once, but a couple of times I saw her re rack yeah. the bar, and I don't she think she do, made through five. She didn't do so great on the on the heavy grace either, and I was surprised because I thought I thought she's typically pretty good at clean and jerks. Mm-hmm. I mean, her overhead's decent, really good actually. I remember talking to Justin way back when at Syndicate or Mac, whichever one she did, where yeah. they said you know in that complex they're like as long as she can you know get the clean, she's mm-hmm. gonna get the jerk. So yeah. Maybe she just kind of ran out of gas. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like the way she kind of quit on that workout. Mm-hmm. I know that re-racking the bar is a lot, but come she on, you gotta, you gotta have a better mindset than that. Yeah, she just looked pissed. Yeah, and and it's good to get pissed if it if it um, propels you, but it right. just it doesn't. It's yeah, it sunk her for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I believe you did name Laura Horvath as the winner. Uh, yeah, she was on my fantasy team and I did think she was going to win. Yes. So Laura finished first, uh, and and she won by 55 points. Mm -hmm. Um, Annie Thor's daughter in second, who never seems to age at (laughs) seven Oh five. Emma Lawson, man, that girl is going to be around for a very long time. She is really good at Mm six seventy. Ellie Turner at six seventy. tied Emma Lawson, but Emma had a win, which got yeah. her the tiebreaker. She had two wins. And Gabby Magala, D- Gabby Magala with uh, was in fifth with six forty-five. Mm-hmm. And there you can kind of see the rest of the top ten: Amanda Barnhart, Cara Saunders, Alexis Raptus, Daniel Brandon, and Ariel Lowen. So before we switch to the guys, I just need to say this because this is something that makes me proud about this sport. Um, I love the fact that especially like an event like this, you, these athletes are big girls. A lot of them are really big girls. And I just think that that is so great for uh, role modeling for the girls and younger athletes now, just to show like, Hey, like when Danny was wearing that shirt, that girls who eat like, yeah, she eats and she's really strong. And I I just love that. These are thick girls um, and very athletic. So, yeah. For sure. It's cool to see. Yeah. So we will switch to the men. And there is Mr. Medeiros at number one. So happy for Chandler. Chandler Chandler Smith, number two, and only 15 points away from the win. I'm so proud. Jeffrey Adler with a third place finish. Pat Vellner in fourth. And Roman Kornikoff in fifth. Huh. Rounding off the ten, top ten, Benjamin Buttons. <laughs> Amy, stop. Go back up real quick. Did uh, up? 
Oh, oh, I'm Down, sorry. Sir, whatever. I don't know which way you're going. Okay, right there. Yep. Number four, five, and six were all on my team. Just looking at that real quick. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So six was Benjamin Button, uh, seven, Jason <laughs> Hopper, eight, Samuel Quant, nine, Noah Olson, and ten, Ricky Garrard. I'll just have you know, three my three guys were in the top ten as well. Okay. Did I even did I even break a thousand on the points for the pick? You did. <laughs> Barely. So let's let's talk Chandler real quick. Okay. Um, it was it was awesome seeing him have fun. Yeah. Um, and be relaxed and hanging out with his buddies, and mm -hmm. I loved the interaction between him and Roman on the log. Um, who they cannot even speak the same language, <laughs> yet they still were getting each other fired up, and. And that Roman left chalk dust prints all over Chandler's face. I thought was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Did you hear his comment too? He's like, I I'm did. not ash. He's like, I'm not ashy. This is chalk on my face. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. Yes. I love that they both made it to the that. wooden log and that they got each other fired up and that Chandler won that event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was really cool. I mean, we've all, we're all huge Chandler fans. We, we really, really want him to do. We'd love him to be on well the show possible. if he would stop ignoring us. Yeah, it'd be great, Chandler. And I and I thought they made a good point today that you know without the qualifier, Chandler doesn't get to come. Sure. And so it's great that they had the qualifier for instances like this, like someone who missed out on the games and still gets a chance to compete at this level and show what he's made of. And to podium, second place, and only fifteen points. Out of first, pretty yeah, freaking awesome. He's he's bringing home some money too, which is great. You know, because oh, yeah. not being at the games, you miss out on a lot of opportunities there, not just, you know, how well you do and what your prize package is. So, yeah, super happy for him. Yeah, because Rogue pays out for event wins and every place they pay gets out money. So, all he... place. yeah. So, let's can we look at our fantasy team scores? <laughs> do we yeah. have to? Yeah, I would like to see what happened. All right, so I will share the screen. Do what do you? What does the winner uh, win? Anyway, this is, we did bet. Money. We never really established this. I'm gonna start doing that now. Yes. <laughs> oh, I broke three thousand. Look at me. Yeah, that's a, the second time this weekend you took second to me. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yeah, this morning I was ahead of Amy by like you 40 were. points. And, uh, and you had Laura. Laura Horvat right? cannot do a handstand push up. And what was Jeffrey Adler doing on the log? My gosh, my strong guy out early. Those two things killed me. No, but I was thinking about just look back at the leaderboard when um, Velner was only 10 points behind Adler. Is I would have loved to have been behind the scenes just hearing them little their little bickering back and forth. Back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I got screwed because uh Lazar hurt his ankle. That's the true. first event. I mean, I think he I would have loved to have seen how he did in the field healthy because that would have been really cool. Mm -hmm. Um I I love though that he, he finished excuse. the weekend. Yeah. Did anybody not finish? Through. Nobody nope. dropped out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, and then Annika did not. I think it's just inexperience. Well, she hasn't had stage. a chance to have that. Yeah. But talk about a home run hitter. Oh, she can okay. turn it on at times, and you know, I hope I hope she knows because she's a friend of the show. I hope she knows that like everything she's doing is building her for the future. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and like. The young kids, like Olivia Kerstetter winning um, Heavy Grace. Insane. 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 16 years old. Yeah, crazy. Jack so Farlow impressive. Jack Farlow winning his heat in Heavy Grace. And I think he finished like fourth or fifth overall. Really cool to see. Mm -hmm. These young kids, man, it's going to be a fun, fun decade of sport. You bring Emma Carey back after the year off with all the people we saw today. Um, and then Mal, my right. goodness, it's going to be yeah. crazy. It is. I, I'm excited for the game. I mean, like, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, let's to see how much growth Mal will have over this season and see 
her and Tia stacked up against each other again. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I love Jacob Hepner's interview. I don't know if you guys got a chance to mm -hmm. see it. He was talking about how Olivia still qualifies for teen next year and that she has not made the decision whether she's going to go in the open division or teen. And Jacob said, in his opinion, she, she should go open division because she's already come to him so many times this weekend about all the stuff she's learned. Right. And that she is so dominant in the teen division she doesn't learn anything. Right. And it's not giving her, I, I, the, I think the argument was like, oh, hold her back so she can get gain some more confidence. She doesn't need any more confidence. She's got plenty of confidence. No. She smashes that field relative to, you know, everyone else mm -hmm. in that age group. So I agree with him and I hope she decides to do that and just go, go open. She'll learn a lot more and you'll be, it's just kind of like, you don't want to be the best where you are. You know, you want to learn from people that are better than you. Yeah. Always. Um, yeah. Yeah. She's ready. She's definitely ready. Yeah. Definitely right. So let's what was your favorite event from the weekend? I don't know. Probably the log. Just it's different. I loved the duel. I just couldn't stand the delays. I, I'm, I'm hoping that that I, I I'm hoping I'm assuming that they're going to do some kind of produce piece in the in the future because mm. uh, Kiki had her CBS microphone and everything else. So I can't wait to see the post product post production piece that they put out um, on CBS Sports wherever that's going to be because it's going to be a condensed version of everything and I think it'll help. <clears throat> I'd like to look at them all again because this weekend was so crazy with work and life and everything else happening that I didn't get a chance necessarily to see every little bit of it or hear all the commentary. So I'm not sure, but that event was really cool. I enjoyed it. I, I love the duel because you had to give everything to make it to the next round and people are biffing with the cyclone bag. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Like I, over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I audibly was like screaming at the TV every time somebody either like face planted over or jumped over. Um, my friend Jason was with me. We were watching it at the gym. And I mean, every time I was just like screaming at the TV from that, like couldn't believe people were just like full send sacrificing their bodies, which I don't understand because isn't it a chip timer on your foot? So like what, does, like, what good is it to dive over if your feet don't get quickly? I think what happened is people were biffing in the field of play, right? Like Matilda, well, that, yeah. Alexis, not on purpose, all of that. Right. That's how it started. Then Alexis wins her appeal. Right. And then people are like, well, if Alexis wins her appeal, now they're doing it this way. We're <laughs> diving. And then everybody just let her rip to get to the end. Great. And I think what they were trying to do is get the momentum going forward with the heavy bag and let it pull them mm -hmm. across the finish line. Because Laura finished like on her head <laughs> and did a full like flip over the top. Yeah. Like that produced piece could be epic. Yeah. When you sure. put all of that together um, with that. But man, our girl Matilda, or my girl Matilda, I should say, <laughs> right. she it's can do so some weird. legless rope climbs. Wow, yeah. she's fast. Um, but I I love the back squat box jump work out mm. I, I did love, love that one element. too yeah i love the element that you had to ride the fine line and make sure you did not drop that back squat yeah um that was I, the, I that was a saturday the that that right is that saturday 10 a.m it was yeah. friday night oh never mind I'm trying to figure out why i didn't get to see that one yeah it all blurs together sure. mm -hmm. um Oh, I was at a football yeah. game. That's fine. Wow. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about football games? Uh, did something happen with uh, Ohio State? In Penn State, our teams played. Oh, they did? Did yeah. your guy have like an amazing game? Wasn't there some kid on your team that rushed like 18,000 yards or something like that today? Oh, well, no. today are you talking about Justin Fields on uh, the Bears team? Eliana was saying something about it at breakfast this morning. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh. I'm no, guessing that it, it was the Ohio most State frustrating beat. game. Ohio State definitely won. 
<laughs> Penn State was winning with six minutes left in the game and then totally fell apart. Yes. Oh, wow. And That's now we're ranked second, tied with Tennessee. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Everybody's a Tennessee fan this year. I feel like there's so many bandwagon Tennessee fans. Well, because they're doing well. Yeah. So you just and, hear and they beat Alabama, and everybody hates yeah. Alabama. Except uh, Bacon, who's a loyal listener. He's a big fan of Alabama, so we will also praise that on here because he is a loyal listener. Um, Phillies or uh, Astros? Phillies. Okay. Phillies. Yeah. I, I support Astros you. Astros are cheaters. <laughs> but they I'm the not ever going to say that on here. They have the cutest third baseman ever, though. The Astros do. Just saying. So. Yeah, I don't know if you I don't know if you saw it today, but they had Sylvester Stallone um, introduce the Steelers Eagles game, I mm. and I and that. talking about Philly sports as a whole, mm -hmm. the Eagles being undefeated, the Phillies being in the World Series, mm -hmm. it was all this big Philadelphia, and you know he's Rocky from Philadelphia, right? right. So, was Kevin Hart there? <laughs> he was not because he's a big Phillies fan. Is he really? Yes. Oh, uh, he's, he's from Philly. Yeah, he's a big Eagles fan. Mm. I'm not an Eagles fan. So. Oh, what are you? I just don't. I don't follow football very much, and I just think Eagles fans are super obnoxious. So I actually like it when the Eagles lose. And they haven't done that this year. Yeah. No. Are they still undefeated? Jeez. Yeah. Oh yeah, they the Steelers insane. suck this year. That's insane. Mm -hmm. But all right. Yeah. Trick or treat tomorrow. Anybody so, getting dressed up? I already got dressed up. And so did Scott. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so I do but, want to talk a couple more things about Rogue. And it's oh, okay. this is like not the fun <laughs> stuff. This is okay, more go. the drama bad stuff. Oh boy. Here we go. What's up? So judging. Judging, judging, judging. <clears throat> we just on the didn't sprint. get that figured out. <laughs> on the, on the overhead squats on the sprint duel mm -hmm. there was a judge in the center lane that no repped every single person mm -hmm. that came through that lane mm -hmm. and it cost those people um the opportunity to move on now that Nick matthew did he was he one of them nick matthew was one of them uh roman krenikoff was one mm -hmm. um there's a list, but you go back and watch the footage of Nick Matthew. And if you tell me he's not getting deep enough, you're a liar. I did. Yeah. I did. That man is ass to the grass mm -hmm. and up every time. His movement is solid. And they, there's they moved no way your, in hell. They moved that judge out of that lane right before Justin got there, right? Correct. So here's what I'm going to say about that. Be coming from somebody who's judged in person before. I think it's really hard for us to watch and interpret how well a judge is doing in certain instances because we're not at their vantage point. We're looking at a camera all the way over sort of on like the first base side or between the, you know, in foul territory between home plate and first base. And that judge was to the right of her, to the left of her athlete <laughs> um, looking up. Right. So there was, I'm well, not saying she was right or wrong. I'm just saying it's very difficult. I, I mean, can hear our that. Guys plays tricks on us sometimes, like I, where we are. I know, like, like Justin's I know lunge, good. right? So Justin's lunge, did we talk about that? Like his last lunge, he got no repped and he, he had to go back for the lunge mm -hmm. on his last thing. And he clearly, if you're watching from the camera, he clearly steps over the line both times. He stands up. He drops his bar. As he drops his bar, his right foot scoots back onto the line. And that's when the judge was looking down after he dropped the bar to make sure he had cleared the line. And that's when he called the no rep. So it's one of those things where the judge only has one set of eyes and he's only looking at one thing at one time. And I think as soon as his, as soon as his lead foot cleared the line, the judge started to look up to make sure he was going to stand all the way up before he dropped the bar and didn't look at that last foot to make sure it went over the line. Cause you're going to assume it did. And then when he did look down to look at his feet, Justin scooted his foot back. 
and he got called. So people were up in arms about that. And I thought that was a very good call. It was just based on what he saw. He could, he, if he had seen the other vantage point or had time to look and from behind, he would have seen that he had cleared the line and then just scooted backwards. And you're allowed to do that. But he didn't know. That's all I'm saying. Scott, you're on mute. Amy, you're on mute. I knew that I was on mute, but I <laughs> didn't know if he was. <laughs> I, I agree with you 98% of the time. Mm -hmm. I am a big defender of judges because it is tough. You don't always have the best position. The camera definitely doesn't have the best position. And I'm going to get right. into that next. Okay. But Good. to no rep every single athlete in your lane on like the first two to three reps. And I would say Roman was, was right on the line. And I, if it was just Roman, I would let it go because I don't have the vantage point that she has. Right. Nick Matthews is so mobile and so agile. His ass was so low. There is no doubt. Was and he, he was stood he up to full up? extension. He did. Okay. That was the other thing I was going to ask. Now it's fast. I mean, you are pissing. This is a sprint. Yeah. And I so just don't, I mean, you just wonder what's long. going through that judge's mind, though. I mean, she she had to have been seeing something, or else she wouldn't have done it. And presumably, she wasn't just no repping it for the hell of it. Yeah. You know? The other example I will use is the handstand push-ups today. Mm -hmm. Watching Spiegel, she gets no repped because she her feet came off the wall. Okay. At some point in the movement. Mm -hmm. And then. Adrian Conway says her feet came off the wall. That's why she was no repped. Okay. Then the next rep, she goes up, her feet came off the wall, but then they come back on and she gets to full extension and it's a good rep. And Adrian Conway is like, well, yeah, as long as you are back on the wall and full extension, then later they're like, no, if your feet come off at any time, it's a no rep. Mm -hmm. Like the announcers don't even know what the standard is. Yeah. Well, and I wonder that's if that's necessary. on purpose. I do know that Rogue's very good about not letting their standards get out to the public because they don't want people like us, you know, shitting on it. But you would think the announcers would know. But again, but, I But it's got to be one or the other. Like, oh, 100%. Yeah. And and the consistency was not good because sometimes they called it a good rep. Sometimes it was a bad rep. I just – and he's saying that as long as you get back on at the top at full extension, you're good. And – and then they're calling no reps halfway up. I'm like, well, then you're not even giving them the opportunity to right, get back right, on right. the wall. I also saw, I think I saw a couple of no reps where like bottoms were hitting the back wall. Yeah. Like that you're like, yeah, I almost that. wonder, no, but it was just on the way up, not even at the end. Mm -hmm. It was like, they were, they were no repping it before they even finished kind of like you, like what you mentioned. So again, unless we were at the athlete briefing, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the standard was. We may never. Yeah. Know. And that's, that's what stinks. Cause when, when we're media at events, we try to go to the athlete briefing so that we know what the standards are sure, and can report things better. But man, I was really confused at that. Um, yeah. And that's a tough movement anyway. And to not know the standard or cause the athletes were like, what am I doing wrong? Now I did see some do like this. So there mm -hmm. must've been a width, a width issue. Yeah. Um, if it was the same standard as in 2019, when they did that, it was, you had to stay, you're within the parallel, you know, yeah, within the yeah. profile Just, of the yeah. parallel bars. So maybe that the was it. And, that, that and we wouldn't have been able to see that from our vantage, point, our vantage point. So, right. But the, but yeah. the one judge was, the one judge was really good about doing this after the no rep, like mm -hmm. no rep, get them. Because yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was your other thing? The broadcast, I thought, really lacked for as good as they have always been in the past. And and the, actually, this is the first year I've watched it on TV. I've always been a part mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, I like that they didn't have cameramen on the floor because it, then it it's easier to see the athletes. But then yeah. again, that you don't get the good shots or the cameramen don't know how to use Zoom. <laughs> and then oftentimes... Like they would stay with Laura failing on the handstand pushups. She's only got two. Like, I don't need to see her fail 20 more times. Can right. I see who's actually like competing for this event? 
Yeah, they did do like a split screen at one point in time because people were very interested yeah. in, you know, how poorly she might do. But I, I agree. I thought Sean and Adrian did a nice job, though. Yeah, yeah, I like Adrian Conway as a, I as a color guy. He's real good. I think it's important that there's someone who's got actual games athlete experience yes. in the booth. Yeah, I think I that's like that. critical. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and and recent recent games common, you know, and not not that the other people don't do a great job, but you know, he's been there. He was there last year. Yeah, I just I think there were too many wide angle shots when specific things were happening. And, and I couldn't tell if Sean and Adrian were in the park mm -hmm. or at row, you know what I mean? Like sometimes they call mm -hmm. it from a TV. Sometimes yeah. they call it from now last year, they were actually up in the press box. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't think we're digging it. Chase Bruce. Uh, but I think Chase has moved more into a. Oh no, that was not a dig at Chase. Guy. That was actually and more of analyst. a dig at Tanya Wagner, and I and <clears throat> nothing against Tanya, and she's great, but like she's been out of the game competitively for quite some time now. Uh, yeah, and I think she's great, and I think she should be there, but I think there needs to be somebody who maybe has you know in more recent times been a commentator. No, I wasn't even thinking about Chase actually. Chase does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah. So anyway, I just I and then in that duel, I wish they could have done something to fill the time between between the rounds because yeah. I mm -hmm. think if there was a filler or um you know they have that huge field and they're not even using the outfield, yeah. have one of the have one of the record breaker events going on in between the rounds yeah. or something. So, so that you're not that. you're not stuck just twiddling your thumbs waiting for them to stick a little nameplate on a right a i mean it's Velcro. a minor league baseball stadium they should have done dizzy bat races and you know they should have been throwing <laughs> hot dogs in the stands with a gun that would have been awesome yeah t-shirt yeah. cannons all that stuff the, the yeah monkeys, hot dog races i like that Ricky Rally, races yeah the monkeys on dogs you know rodeo whatever that is yeah that would have been cool yeah but they have or that huge field to do you know, let's something do in the middle pitch. of there yeah I agree. Even um, if it was, so, even if they did like a back to back thing where they put the rigs back to back and they had like guys going, girls going or something, you know, this heat, that heat, I guess that would have been too complicated, but yeah, it was, it was, a, I mean, and we were watching it at home and it was like, we're looking at our clock watches. We're like, Oh my God, it's like three hours. And we haven't even like, we still have a whole nother, you know, guys division to do. And I don't think they, yeah, I was taking five minute long. naps. Yeah. And this but, is my uh, last criticism. Oh God. Last criticism. You're so negative, Scott. I, I am. And it'll probably cost us this person as a guest. Uh oh. But I got to say it. Like, oh, <laughs> the way Medeiros has become a loner at these events, it was something I observed at the games where every time it was like break time, he was off by himself away from the rest of the athletes. I noticed that same thing as. That happening this weekend on the telecast, especially after the log event, he went off by himself. So while other people were like talking and cheering and, and still paying attention. Okay. So here's what, here's my criticism to your criticism, Scott. <laughs> okay. First of all, I just saw Elisa. Maybe he's trying to get over <laughs> to Ellie. Okay. All right. I can appreciate that. Maybe he was also anxious about his girlfriend. Um, <laughs> But this is a job, right? This is his job. And maybe he's just completely focused on his job and, you know, speaking to coworkers and things like that is not a part of how he can stay focused. So maybe he was just trying to stay focused. Yeah, Scott. <laughs> so, so Bruce, I have not seen that. Like when I was at the games, I saw it very distinctly with Justin. I did not see that with Mal. If I saw that with Mal, I would feel the same way. I don't, I don't think I care. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Like I, yeah, I, you, you don't have strong feelings one way or the other about this. Correct. 
Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't think, I, have I, very I don't strong think feelings. it, I don't think it has to be yeah. summer camp, you know, for, for everybody. Like yeah. this is, this is a job you're like Amy said, and it's a competition. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting that you observe that. And I think, you know, it, personally, Justin's probably missing out on some really fun memories and like relationships, close friendships and things like that. But you know, whatever, he can go cry in a bag of money. I don't care. Yeah. At least that's what I mean. And then when you see that he, he lifts the log after the time you look in the background at all the other athletes, like they called him out fast. Do they? <laughs> all of them. Like, like they're screaming, like you see Chandler running from off screen to on screen to like, what are you? He's after the time after the, like they're jumping. Now maybe it was just, they wanted a fair playing field. Or maybe he has alienated himself from the rest of the group. Yeah. But I'm here for the, I, I'm going to use a cat line. I'm here for the drama. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> you you do it. love some dramatic <laughs> rom-coms. I do. <laughs> maybe that's really what this is. The love story of Justin Medeiros. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. And and to be totally transparent, I am not a Madeira's fan. I am not a Madeira's fan, so I am probably slanted in yeah. this negative direction. Um, I wanted Pat Vellner to beat him today so bad. I just uh, wanted someone to beat him. Happen. Yeah, I'm just bored of him. Oh, I didn't care. Chandler could have beat him. I still would have been happy. Yeah, yeah. that would have been great. Jeffrey Adler could have beat him. I would have been really happy. Because <laughs> you picked him. Hey, what hey, happened guys. to Ricky? What happened to Ricky? Just he he needs to work on his top end strength. I don't know. We should yeah, talk to I Justin. Need, see what's up. I should. We should. We should have him yeah. on. I yeah. almost called Justin to jump on tonight, but I. It's a long weekend, and he probably has no voice left. Yes, yeah. Elise, you're correct. We will never have him on. Yeah. He's never come on anyway. He doesn't ever respond to any of my stuff. So he's too bougie for us. We've had Knifer on though, haven't we? No. Uh, I've had him on short interviews, but never like a full. Oh, like out of semi or something. Yeah. Yeah. We're so happy for Chandler. For That's sure. right. Go arm. Now we just we just got to get him out of New England and then we'll be golden. Yeah. So hey guys, um, Rip just uh, made a nice dinner here. So I'm gonna uh, just see myself out of here. Awesome. Enjoy. All right. See you later. Congrats. Thanks. She's trying to leave. I'll, <laughs> it's like, I'll yeah. take her out. I was Ricky just waiting for her to hit broadcast instead of oh. leave studio. <laughs> yeah, broadcast. <laughs> so I think I, at least I think you might be onto something. I think he might've been injured. Some of the people were, were really, Tim Paulson didn't look like himself this weekend. Um, there were times like he was really tightening the belt. Um, and I actually talked to Tim. He was going to try to jump on with us tonight. But uh, I don't know there. Ricky. Do you mean when you say tightening the belt, you mean literally tightening the belt? Literally, literally okay. tightening. Like he's like hurting. He, in events that I don't even remember Tim ever putting a belt on for. Got it. Okay. Saxon. Yeah, Elise. He does not look like himself at all. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but he has agreed to come on after Rogue, so we should have him on in the next week or two. So maybe we will have some answers there. Um, I know he's supposed to be going to Australia in November. Biggest bust. Daniel Brandon. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I think people had a lot of people had her on the podium. I think Saxon on the men's side, there he finished bottom five. And oh, that wow. is not a place he is normally at. Yeah, true. Um on the women's side, I think my biggest surprise was Mano Anganese. I think she finished tenth. 10th or 11th. She was good. Um, coming from the qualifier to do that. And not many people even knowing who she was. Um, I thought that was pretty surprising. 
I think Chandler was a huge surprise and a, a very pleasant, huge surprise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know why I put that up again. Uh, 11th, yeah, at least. Hmm. She's such a cool person, too. Mano. Um, um Annie Annie got second, right? Correct. It's awesome. Yeah. She's she's just she's one of the greatest gonna, ever. Yeah, she's definitely gonna go into indie this year. I can't imagine her doing anything other than that. Yeah, she I guess she stated at the event that she has not made the decision what she's doing this year, but she was having a lot of fun this she's weekend made the decision with the individuals. Yeah. She's playing coy, but she's got she got to talk to the people that she promised would be on her team <laughs> to tell them that she's going individual before she tells all of us. That, that that would I can't imagine her doing anything other than that. And I thought it was cool that when like in the duo when she was or duel when she was eliminated, she was up in the stands with her daughter mm -hmm. and Frederick uh, as soon as she could be hanging out. Um, and I think as long as she can do stuff like that, she will keep going. Yeah, uh, Bruce, we talked about that. I, I'm I have a problem with it. I have a problem with Laura winning it and being so having such a huge hole. And notice that they didn't have a minimum work requirement for that workout. And they did in 2019. I'm okay it with took it. Her out of the running. Were there were there I'm minimum okay work it. work requirements for any of those events? I didn't see anything. I mean, I, I would assume that no. Said that. Yeah. Oh, so what's next, Scott? What do we have going on? Uh, we are doing a small business promotion um, where we're promoting small businesses in the CrossFit space. And you have booked Vindicate, Mr. Travis, yep. this Wednesday. Wednesday, uh, So we'll have him on. 6.30. Um, Elena Buds, who just joined the underdogs team, finished ninth at Atlas. Uh, we actually interviewed her prior to Atlas in one of our semifinal interviews. She's coming on next Sunday night, um, 4 30 West Coast time, 7 30 our time. Just got that confirmation. What day is that? Sunday? Sunday, a week from tonight. I told you I'm live streaming the, the William and Mary baseball game, right? Over the weekend on YouTube, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I won't be around for that one. Travis They're still in like fall ball, right? This is like, their um, fall world series. It's a, it's their last intramural tournament where they or inner squad tournament where they have a green team and a gold team and they go after each other. Super fun. Big, big tradition. So you guys in the chat, if you know any CrossFit small businesses that are out there, struggling and not not necessarily struggling they could be very successful but we just want to promote them that they're out there doing their thing um and we have a couple people in mind that we're going to reach out to but we're starting with um vindicate we should try but to if you get have any suggestions um, the guy from ice age meals because they're running into some trouble right now and need to sell some of their stuff i think they're in danger of going out of business that's what i heard i think I thought Nick. I heard they're filing bankruptcy. Yeah, Nick. No, what's the guy's name? I forget. Maybe we'll have him on. Travis is the man. Yes, he is. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. Well. Yeah, bankruptcy. bankruptcy. I was thinking Nick from what or Wad Zombie. Uh, oh yeah. I was mm -hmm. thinking Paper Street Coffee, Gabe, for sure. Yep and uh and whoever else we come across but that'd be fun with that i'm tired my muscle it's relaxers are starting week. to kick in getting a little woozy yeah every every now and then cat needs a shot in the ass <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> and oh, she got it this Lord. afternoon i did hurt like hell i took the pain away from my back for a second <laughs> yeah all right. Yeah, well, with that, goes. good luck, everybody, this week on your workouts. 
uh, keep that fitness thing going. If you like what you hear, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and hit the notifier so you first know when new episodes come out. And hey, you can even become a member of the channel. And I made the lowest membership as low as I could possibly make it under YouTube <laughs> rules. So jump onto that and we're going to start doing some member only stuff once we get a handful of members. But until then, we will see you next time on the Clydesdale Media News Channel. <laughs>